you know, for me, this record, I don't look at this record as, as like a concept record by any means, where I, I had fallen in line with doing that a lot, with our last record being about one specific thing, record before that kind of being about one specific thing. I allowed myself the freedom on this album to kind of explore different things. You know, I allowed myself the freedom to sing about something positive, you know, like someone positive in my life that's had an effect on me. I also look at this record as a little, as like kind of a companion piece to the last one in the sense of I'm no longer singing about this person in my life that passed away. I'm singing about how my life is since releasing that record and how that record has affected me personally. I got stuck on, on feeling like I had to write something more impactful than the last record, but realizing like, I don't need to do that. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want to have to go through something worse than that. You know, what I can do is just write a very honest record about who I am at this time and realize that that is, that can be just as impactful as something like the last record. And what we ended up with was, was I think that. Once it was, uh, once it was like, became a possibility to do a record with Ross, you know, it, it brought me back to, you know, being a young kid discovering aggressive music through him, you know, through through Corn and up until you know through Sepultura and Slipknot and all these bands, and then eventually Glassjaw, which had such a huge impact on me. First time I heard about Touche was from uh, Cody. A lot of from uh, Blood Brothers. He mentioned Touche, and I thought it was this other band. It turned out that from some other strange source, Touche Amore approached me, and I thought it was the other band. So when I saw these guys, they were hardcore, and, and I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> this is so cool. It had like this like strange, meant to be sort of mindfuck. <laughs> thing to it attached and whenever something like very woo woo comes out I instantly open my eyes ten times wider and stay mega open for it and usually when something like that happens before a record I start it turns out to be a, one of the big ones you know the like the really good ones because it's just impossible circumstances So for Lament, it was a very collaborative writing process. Basically everybody kind of brought stuff, everybody bought, brought riffs, everybody, everybody had drum ideas, everybody had lyric, lyrical cadence ideas. It was much more of a collaborative experience. And we also went into the studio with things a lot more open-ended for Lament. We knew that once we met up with Ross, things were subject to change. Going in to the studio with Ross for the first time was very different. I had a little bit of an expectation just based on things I'd heard or read about, and I was sort of ready for it to be a little bit antagonistic. You know, from step one, I just like couldn't guess what was gonna happen. We, he was in the room with us, ironing out details of the song and throwing like total wrenches and things for us to try, which was scary and super fun. For me personally, going into writing this record, I wanted to go in with as little like preconceived notions of anything necessarily. Like I just knew I want to be more dynamic, but also just be willing to go in there and like kind of jam things out and see where things take us. And I think that that's something we kind of all had agreed upon too, was like, let's be a little more um, open to come in with something not totally finished and just kind of see where it takes us. It felt like we were in an elevated environment when we were in there. It just felt like, okay, we're on a ride right now, creative ride. And after the first night, I had difficulty sleeping. It was like, for real, like I, I felt so creatively charged up. I, I don't know how to explain that. I don't know, it just, there was a sense of urgency or something that, you know, that just came through. There was just so much, I don't know. I don't know what to call that. <laughs> 
I think the underlying thing that opened everybody up was that having had made so many albums, after a while you just have to detach yourself from it. You almost have to listen to your song as if it's, it's not you playing it, you know, and you have to really objectively look at it. So I think being detached, being open to something new, I think that was the groundwork for there to be kind of an evolution.